I loved her. She was everything to me, and I can't live without her. Ever. She is beautiful to me. Even now. I walk to my friend's house. It's a short walk. I only live a few houses down. I knock on the door and wait. Nobody answers. I hear her dog barking on the other side. I know she's home. We're going to the concert tonight. What could she be doing? I let myself in. She gave me a key about a year ago. Shelby, it's me, Brittany, I yell. Nothing. I walk up the stairs. I still don't see her. Shelby, this isn't funny. I get worried. Where is she? I walk to her room. Shelb, we've got to go. I angrily shout and open the door. I quickly shut it, then open it slowly. Is that real? Am I dreaming? There she is, dead on the floor. I run to her and go check for a pulse. My fingers slip inside her warm, gushy throat. She had slit her own throat, the knife barely in her hand. Oh God, I knew she had some problems, but she never said that they were this bad. If only she had talked to me, I would have been there for her. Sorrow quickly turns to panic. What am I going to do? Who do I call? She has no one but me. Only me. Nobody knows but me. I calm down and think. She can finally be mine. There is blood everywhere. I shout to her body. I go downstairs to get a rag and bucket. We gotta clean this up. I get back to her. She is still perfect. I pick her up by her arms and struggle to drag her to the bathroom. Now to get you in the tub, I cheerfully giggle. I remove her clothes and throw them aside. It takes a few minutes to get her inside the tub. Her dead weight is almost too much for me. I go back to the rag and bucket and start cleaning the blood off the floor. It takes hours and I still need something to get the stain out of the carpet. I go back to the bathroom and I turn on the shower head. I run the water over her body. Blood flows down her chest. It's kind of chunky because of the coagulation. I rinse her hair, getting the sticky blood out of it. I've always loved your hair, I said to her. I put shampoo in my hands and rub it into her scalp. After her bath, I lay her on the bed. We'll get you dressed in a minute, I assure her. I look at her on the bed. All I see is the giant gash in her neck. This simply won't do. I find some thick yarn and a needle. I sew her neck shut the best I can and feel satisfied with myself. I walk over to her closet and pick out my favorite dress. <gasps> I really like this one on you. I smile and walk back to the bed. It almost feels as though she is smiling back. I remember the first time I saw her in this dress. She was going to dinner with some guy that would never appreciate her as I do. I wrestle with her to get it on. Come on now, you gotta help me a little, I say, sitting her up. She falls back over. Hmm. That was 15 years ago now. I moved into her apartment with her shortly after that. I kept the apartment paid for and called her work to inform them she quit. No one knew she was with me. Dead. The smell, you ask. Well, I looked into the embalming process. I even became a mortician to cover up my purchases. It was all going well, until now. Until I got cancer. Who will take care of my love now? When I'm gone. My only solace is knowing we'll be together in the afterlife. Greatest element of being a teacher is not just
just what happens inside the classroom. A man and his wife are resting quietly in a living room watching TV. Nothing is being said between them, the TV filling the silence. The phone rings. Who could be calling at this hour? The wife grumbles. <sighs> I'll go check it out. The man says as he puts down his newspaper. He walks over to the phone and picks it up. Hello? Nothing. Hello? Suddenly a little girl's voice talks. Daddy, I want to come home. I'm sorry, sweetheart, but I think you have the wrong number. He replies assuringly. I'm not having any fun, and no one will play with me. The voice persists. I'm certain your parents will come to get you. I've been here forever. Um, I'm sure it feels that way. Bye-bye now. He moves to hang up the phone when he hears something weird on the line. Like a scream turned into static. Daddy, please. The voice sounds a little distorted now. It's dark in here, and I'm all alone. Where are you? You know where I am. Is this some kind of prank? He is slightly angry now. The speech sounds more familiar as she speaks. I want to come home now, Daddy. This isn't funny. I lost my daughter 15 years ago. The wife rushes into the room and demands to know who he is talking to. But Daddy, I never left. The voice turning normal again. They both hear it. An icy shiver runs down her spine. I'm going to call the police, she insists. Why are you doing this, Daddy? I need you to come get me. It's so cold here. No, I watched it happen. I saw her. He stops and looks at his wife. What did you see? The voice getting distorted again. It was an accident, she cries. Please, forgive us. We didn't mean to... A click as the call ends. Then silence. The man and his wife fall to the floor and weep. Don't look behind you. You now want to look behind you, I know it. It's instinctual, like thinking about pink elephants when you're told not to. Maybe you already did it, and maybe you chuckled at being so silly and turning around. That will only make what's about to happen even worse for you. I'm sorry about doing this, but I just want to survive. I have a kid, a husband, I love my life. I bet you have people who love you too. I'm very sorry about doing this. Listen to me, please. Don't look back. It's lurking, close to you now. So close. Can you hear that? It's almost imperceptible now. But it won't be for long. I bet you can notice something moving closer. I sent it to you, offered it a new victim. This story is a trap, and you've fallen for it. Now it knows you're out there. Running won't help, I've tried it before. I barely survived that experience. Let me give you a piece of advice, it's the least I can do, now that I've doomed you to a hellish experience. For no reason in the world, allow the lights to go off. Keep them on at all times. During the night, during the day, it doesn't matter. Keep your cell phone handy in case it makes sure the lamps in your apartment or home stop working. It's clever that way. 
devious that way. Don't scream. Screaming makes it hurt you all the worse. But more importantly, don't look directly at it. So for crying out loud, don't look behind you now. You thought you'd be safe, right? Just another creepy story to spook you in the middle of the night. Nothing but harmless fun. You figured it's like a roller coaster. It pumps you full of adrenaline, but you'll come out without a scratch on you. So you read the first story and you figured... I looked back, there was nothing but a wall there. Or my mom, sister, or any other loved one. That's how I get you. You feel safe. Secure. You think I meant that one time you shouldn't look back. But it's not quite so easy and significant human. One day, one evening, one night. You'll look behind you. And there I'll be smirking the cruel smile of the Eternal. I'm the reason you can't fall asleep at night whenever you're sure you heard a sound. I'm the reason you feel goosebumps while walking alone in a dark street. You can't see me, but your mind knows I'm there. Lurking. Waiting. Playing with my prey. And the time will come. I'll be there, right behind you, when you least expect me to be. And then you'll see me, and remember this warning. All too late. Good night, human. Go to sleep. Perhaps I'll be waiting in the morning when you first open your eyes. Hope the thought of me watching you sleep doesn't bring you nightmares. <laughs>